out of here now. Where'd it go? Yeah, I've got to wait again. Okay, I've got Sony Vegas open and I've got my clips imported in. So I'm just going to bring my main clip up here. And I'm going to run this forward until it reaches the point where my actor beams out. Get me out of here now. Okay, right there. Now here I'm going to split the clip right here. Move this over here a little bit. Over on this, I'm going to back up one frame, and I'm going to save a shot of my actor in the beam out pose. Then I'm going to go over here and save another shot of the empty set without the actor. Now I can move this over here out of the way until I need it. Add in two video tracks. Take our still shot of the actor in the beam out pose. And bring him up there. Bring our transporter sound effect in. And I'm going to make the beam out shot the same length as the sound effect. And now on the uppermost track, we take our empty, put it in here, and make it the same length as the sound effect. Now we need a mask for the top layer here. And the way I'm going to get that mask, because I don't like drawing a mask on a scene where I can't see what I'm doing, go to Event Pan and Crop on the beam out still, tick the mask button, and go ahead and draw a mask around the actor. This actually can take a lot longer than this to do. I'm being a little bit quick here for the sake of a tutorial, but if you were doing a really serious production, you'd want to take your time and make a really good mask. And yes, you can do this using the cookie cutter if what you're beaming is going to be the same shape as one of your cookie cutter presets. And I'm not including the shadow because I'm not beaming the shadow, I'm beaming the actor. Once, you, once you've closed the mask, you set the ma mode to negative, feather type in, feather amount about 1.5. Now, go to this first keyframing on the mask track, and I copy the keyframe. And then I untick mask, which effectively disables it. Now go up here to the topmost track where the empty picture is, enable the mask, right click on the first keyframe in the mask track, and paste. There's your mask. Now this empty track has a hole cut in it that's the shape of your actor. Now you take your Sparkly's effect. This is the visual part of the transporter effect. Bring that up here. It's got a audio track, but we don't need that, so we'll just delete it. We will trim this to be the same length as what we're working with. And now we go over here to compositing mode and set it to screen. That makes the black part of the Sparkly's drop out. And also, because this Sparklies was done in 4x3 video mode, I'm going to change it to 16x9 
just to make sure that it fits what I'm doing. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And we'll fade the sparklies in, the visual part of the effect. We'll fade that in about 21 seconds. 21 frames, excuse me. And then on the other end, it will fade out in about 21 frames. The actor in the beam mount still position and fade that out all the way back here. It starts fading just a little, a little bit after the sparklies come to full intensity. That way your actor fades out a lot faster than the sparklies do. And you notice, yes, there is a hole there, the shape of your actor. That's the reason you need the fourth video track down here. You need your empty image again here, stretched to fit the same thing as everything else. And now, when your actor finishes dematerializing, it doesn't leave that hole. Come back over here and drag this back into play. To find a spot in here, just a few seconds before your second actor comes in. Okay, there he is. So I'm going to go right about here, just before he comes in. Cut this. This clip I don't need, so I will delete that. And now I will take this clip, bring it over here right up against this, and now you've got the actor first actor coming in, beaming out, empty set, second actor comes in looking for him. Okay, now for one more touch, go back over here to the beginning and you look for where the communicator opens. And here's where it starts, right there. And I've got a nice little sound file, communicator chirp. All right, now I'm going to set my communicator chirp right there like that, so that when he opens it, it'll make that sound. And to take it to one more step, after I processed this, what I would do, and I would, I would actually go ahead and process this and take the output file created from this and go in and use chroma key to put an actual set behind the actors. And there you have it, Star Trek Original Series Transporter Effect.